So welcome back to another lesson in this WebLogic training. And in this lesson, we are going to look at data source and JMS Java messaging server. But before that, let me do a quick recap on what we have covered so far. So we started with Oracle WebLogic 12C and 11G, where I mentioned that these are the topics that we are going to cover. So agenda for this entire module, including multi-tenancy, which is yet to come. Then we'll go after that, we'll go into installation of WebLogic, both 12C as well as 11G. So we discussed about what is a WebLogic server, what are the administration tasks for WebLogic admins, what are the tools available for WebLogic admins. So things like admin console, fusion memory control, WebLogic scripting tool, RESTful management resources, we'll see all these in coming modules. Then we looked at WebLogic domain, which was one of the most important thing which is nothing but a logical collection of servers and associated resources for that. Then what are things come consist of within a domain? In which way domain can be deployed, which is one installation, multiple domain or one domain, but multiple installations. We also looked at what is domain home? What are some of the key important files within domain home? Then we looked at servers. We also looked at two different type of servers which is admin and managed servers we also looked at the java virtual machine or jvm we looked at what is the minimum memory what is the maximum memory then within admin server we said admin server is a singleton service and managed server is a app service or managed server is a server on which you deploy your applications or custom applications we also discussed about the association between admin and managed servers and what are clusters and within how does cluster communicate to each other i mentioned that in the coming modules we also have high availability where we look at unicast and multicast cluster communication then uh, the new concept introduced in weblogic 12c that's called as dynamic clusters we're going to go deep into these dynamic clusters or in what component support and what don't sub component not support will come cover that in subsequent modules as well then we looked at within dynamic cluster the servers that created in dynamic cluster is called as dynamic servers which are based on a server template so this is what we covered in the previous lesson now let's look at jdbc or data sources so when weblogic server is an application server that host or deploy application on top of that however the data for that application goes into the database and the way or how an application server connects to the database or how weblogic connects to the database is using jdbc that stands for java database connectivity now so what you do uh, you create a data source and how to create a data source we are going to look in a minute and there are different type of data sources we'll look in that as well so the way to connect or the the way weblogic server connects to the database it uses jdbc there are different type of data sources and one of them is generic data source which will be used if you have a database like single node database or single instance database which could be an oracle database my mysql database or any other databases you'll have you'll create generic data sources then you also can create a grid link data source and what that grid links data source will come into picture is when you have an Oracle database with rack or stands for real application cluster. Now, if you're not familiar with rack, you need to understand just on a high level that it's nothing but same database, but running two instances on two machines for high availability. So you put a grid link data source, which will connect from WebLogic to first node and also second node. And as new node of database connects or be, become part of rack cluster, the generic data source will automatically add or remove as and when a rack database node being added at the back end or removed. So grid link data source. If you're part of Oracle Fusion middleware, we're also going to go deep into this grid link data source when we look at high availability module. Then there is a multi data source, which is same as uh, multiple versions or multiple generic data sources will make a grid or multi data source so what will have same multi data source will again come into picture when you have a rack database so suppose you have 
two node rack database or real application cluster database or three node rack database each instance of rack database will have a generic data source and collection of these generic data sources will have a multi data source assume that one pipe then going into three different pipe or two different pipe based on number of rack database nodes that together will make a multi data source we'll see that as well when we look at high availability so these are three different ways of data or three different type of data sources that you can create now multi data source and grid link both are for rack grid link is a little bit more advanced feature and depending on the web logic version which you are using it you may have to pay some extra license fee for to use that feature however the license fee is outside scope of this uh, this course so but it could be free as well the advantage of using grid link is when the any backend database node gets added or removed from a rack cluster of the database the applic or the web logic server will automatically add or remove because it's a grid link so grid link have that feature now these configurations are stored under domain home config jdbc so entire domain as we discussed earlier there's something called as a domain home all the configurations will go inside domain home config and jdbc uh, folder so let's connect to the weblogic console of 12c and see how does it look like and we are going to go and quickly create a database if possible or and where this we'll see also see where these files are stored on the file system so i am on the console here and this is a change center which means if i need to make any modifications and if my a weblogic domain is configured in a production mode we'll see that what is a production mode in a minute or in subsequent lessons but for now assume that in order for me to make any changes in this console i need to enable a lock which i've already done and then i you go to services and go to data sources and from here from data sources you go and create a new data source so you drop down and say what kind of data sources you want now because it's a 12c there are two more data sources being added which is proxy data source and ucp and we'll be i'll be adding that as a bonus lesson on these two additional data sources so we let we are going to create a generic data source and in generic data source you will give the name so we'll say that jdbc for example db1 and scope again uh, we're going to look at a scope in subsequent lesson in this in this module where scope feature got introduced because of multi tenancy feature or multi tenancy feature introduced in 12c now jndi name will be the name used by the application to use this database so instead of application will not use this name called jdbc db1 the application if needs to access this jdbc it's going to use this jndi name here so we'll specify some jndi name and you specify which what database you want to connect and then in subsequent screens you need to provide the database host name port number and configuration and other details for connecting to the specific database and you finish a complete successfully and that's how you create jdbc we'll go into these details when we go and look at in if you're look, watching this in fusion malware training then you will get to look in and we go deep dive into this in uh in the soa module or we'll see some of these jdbcs depending on where you're looking we'll go in detail about this this jdbc now if you look at the configuration file uh, where these configurations are or where with this configuration will go we are it's going to go into domain home and then config folder and inside that config folder you will have all the configurations of weblogic domain will be under domain home config inside that there will be a folder called jdbc and that's where my java database configurations are this config.xml file is the main configuration for entire domain my jdbcs will be here and because i don't have any jdbc or any uh, database connection right now in this domain because there's no domain here or details configured here that's why i don't see any configuration let's connect to a, another weblogic domain or another machine that has this jdbc and we'll con connect to that machine and see how does it look like so i'm connecting to a, another weblogic domain and now in that which this is a 12 11g data uh, weblogic server so our weblogic console here under data sources i have all these jdbcs so if i connect to the putty to the backend server or let me connect to this one of the and see how does it look like so i'm connecting to 
Oracle Access Manager data source, and I can look at connection pool will give me information like this is my database host name, this is my port number, this is my service name. It's using using or connecting using a user called dev underscore om and so on. Where this or what all servers, WebLogic server can use this JDBC that will be available under targets, which means this JDBC is targeted to admin server, OEM policy manager, and OEM cluster. So what you see here, this is my this is being targeted. So this JDBC can only be used by admin server, OEM policy manager, and OEM cluster. If my BI server will try to connect the uh, or use this JNDI or this JDBC, then which using JDBC OEM DS, it's not it won't be able to do that because it will say hey. No JDB, no JDBC connection found because this JDBC is targeted only on selective admin and managed server and cluster, not to all servers. Now, if we look at the same thing for configuration point of view, so I'll connect to another server. No, this is wrong. So I'm going to into this domain where my domain are uh, the, the domain that has JDBC. I'll go into same domain home config and then JDBC. So under config folder, I'll also have JDBC. And now if you see here, each JDBC that I have in the back end here, so each JDBC or each data source here. So there are around 17 of them. I should have 17 or so files here, one each representing a data source. So now if you are hitting any problem and you want to know where the database is connect or where this JDBC is connecting to, I can go to OMDB JDBC and open it and it will tell me my host name, port number and service name. This is my database username. Password is stored in an encrypted AES algorithm base or AES, it uses AES encryption method to encrypt the password for this schema and on the, on the, the WebLogic server. So that's about uh, web log that's about JDBC. Now let's look at one more topic before we head on to the next lesson. So JMS and JMS is in a simple terms nothing but Java messaging server, which is now which enables or JMS enables applications or multiple applications or different app applications to asynchronously communicate with each other using messages. So I have an application one and it needs to send a message to another application. You use JMS by asynchronously sending these messages across each other and WebLogic support the JMS implementation. Now, Jim, the applications in within uh, within uh, WebLogic server or JMS, it can act as a JMS client or JMS server or both. So within that, it can act both JMS client and JMS server. Now, the application that's sending or, or or that's sending the message will be become a producer and the application that collects that message will become a consumer within jms client server architecture and weblogic supports jms 1.1 specification so and how do you create jms again you depending on which weblogic server you are there might be slight differences or uh or, or slight navigation path difference. So you again go back to the WebLogic domain and here you should have messaging and JMS server. What do you see here? WebLogic domain messaging JMS server. And there's a little bit more as well. However, if you're listening this, we are going to cover in, in WebLogic course. So depending on if you're listening this in WebLogic, we are going to go deep into this JMS uh, a little bit further. If you're listening it in Fusion Middleware or SOA, we'll go slightly when we look at uh, SOA store that's when we are going to touch base again a little bit more about JMS. But this is how you go and create JMS from here. So let me do a quick recap on this lesson. Just on a quick, uh, JDBC is nothing but a way to connect from WebLogic server to the database. In TIL 11G, there are three ways to connect, which is a generic, grid link, and multi-data source. In 12C, there are two more, which we got added, which you saw just earlier. And we are going to cover that. I'm going to add a bonus lesson in a minute on, on within in this module. Multi-data source and grid link are both for 
rack database that's sent for real application cluster and the configurations are stored in domain home config jdbc jms it's basically asynchronous messaging between two applications so this is all about jdbc and jms in weblogic now head on to the next lesson we will look at node manager and machine and this is again uh, one of the important or one of the topics which we get a lot of questions especially around the machine and node manager and how i start my uh, servers or managed servers or weblogic servers remotely or from a from a weblogic console so head on to the next lesson where we look at node manager and machines in weblogic server i'll see you in next lesson